It's all on the tape. 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 We ain't gon' walk around it. Oh no. We ain't gon' talk about it. Let's go. We ain't gon' walk around it. Oh no. We ain't gon' talk about it. Let's go. It's all on the tape. 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 It's raw assassin. He gon' bring it like a door dash. Like a door dash. Every Thursday at noon, it's about to be a blast. We put it all on the table like a smorgasbord. And it don't matter the subject, it can be explored. Yeah, it's really zone and he going strong. Don't bring the kids, cause we talking grown. Bring your opinion, don't matter if it's right or it's wrong. We preaching the topic, it's on. It's all on the tape, 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 it's all on the tape. We ain't gon' walk around it. Oh no, we ain't gon' talk about it. Let's go. We ain't gon' walk around it. Oh no, we ain't gon' talk about it. Let's go. It's all on the tape. 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 Boom, boom, boom. What's motherfucking poppin'? We back in the building. All on the table podcast. Coming at you live each and every motherfucker Thursday. I be your boy, boy, Raw says, talking my shit as I do. Oh, so motherfucking well. Just here, chopping it the fuck up, having a good time, man. I, every now and then, y'all know I like to bring y'all a little bit of education, if you will. You know what I'm saying? Help y'all learn some shit. Because, you know, I come on here, I talk a lot of shit. Nine out of ten, probably still going to talk some shit, too. But we're going to try to learn some shit on this one. You know what I mean? Especially for all you podcasters in the motherfucking world. I went down to PodFest myself, and I learned a lot while I was there. Uh, During the process of me learning shit, I met some folks, which helped me learn even more shit. I know a lot of us, we get into this podcast thing, and we we just doing it. We just here. We don't really know what the fuck's going on. We just feel like, you know what? We good at shit talking. Let's get on here and talk shit, or we good at, at whatever, financial banking or some bullshit like that and oh let me fucking teach you how to do it but are you actually an expert at this shit or is you just telling people shit just to tell people shit this is something a lot of y'all gotta understand real shit um while i was there i learned so much man my my brain was blown within the first day and we still had two days left at that point i didn't want to learn anything more I just wanted to meet people at that point. And I actually learned more by meeting people, having conversations in the hallway, chilling in the black hallway, if you will. <laughs> Y'all have said, and I know if you wasn't there, you like, what the fuck is he talking about? We definitely had the black hallway proper, for the sure. Hood, the hood sure. hallway. Like a motherfucker. Like you knew, first of all, when you could hear motherfuckers before you turn the corner, you know you're in the black hallway. <laughs> and it ain't like we was at the beginning of the hallway. We was deep in the hallway. We had at least every 15 minutes, at least one security guard or cop walk down the hallway and ask us where the bathroom was at. Y'all motherfuckers knew damn well the bathroom wasn't down here. Y'all ain't slick. We niggas. We knew what the fuck y'all was doing. Y'all was coming to sniff out the surroundings, see what's going on. But it is what the being, fuck it is. Y'all were being policed. We definitely was because a lot of white folks was walking down there and they looking like, what the fuck going on? Because it started out, it was like four or five of us. Then it was eight of us. Then it was 10 of us. And it was like, then it got to the point where nobody could really get through that hallway. But even though it was nothing at the end of it, but nobody could get through that hallway and everybody kept wanting to walk down there. Really, they just wanted to see what was going on. That's all that shit was. But It is what it is. But I learned more in the hallways than I did actually sitting in a lot of these rooms. A lot of these rooms weren't actually meant for us to sit in. Reason Mm. I say that is they said a lot of things that we have no clue about. We've never seen. We don't know about. And they know this. So they say it said things in ways where for real, for real, we couldn't even understand what the fuck they were saying. Mm. Yeah, you can get little bits and pieces, but it wasn't actually meant for us to learn but so much. It was meant for us to walk in this building and say, hey, how much of my money can I give you in hopes that you'll possibly give me one extra view? Mm. That's really what that shit was. Needless to say, I will be back at PodFest next year, though. Okay. (laughs) 
<laughs> I'm not going to lie to y'all and pretend like I'm not because I actually did learn shit. I'm one of those people. I don't need for you to show me everything for me to learn a little bit. Mm. Like, that's just me. Mm. I'll figure out. Just give me that little bit. I'll research the rest. Certain shit that I heard while I was there, I've actually implemented some of it already. Some of it, I'm like, nah, let me hold off on shit like that. But that's just me. I'm different from most people. Some people need you to put everything in their lap for them to understand it. I don't need that. That's just a superpower that I have. It is what the fuck it is. But while I was there, I was in the black hallway and I ain't going to lie, I kind of felt some type of way. Because while I was standing there, I'm like gathering people Hey, come be with us. Come hang with us. And I look up and I see these, these group of black people and they're standing there. They doing their thing. And I'm like, hey, hey, I'm waving and shit. I'm screaming at them. Hey. And then they just like, they looked at me. One of them in particular looked at me dead in my face and just kind of like, ah, fuck out of here, nigga. Like, that's a lie. You. That's no, no, a no, lie. No, let me don't, finish my story. That's not don't, the truth. Don't, don't do that now. Don't do that. Wait a don't minute. You me. didn't even get the black people nod? Don't do no, me. Don't I ain't do get me. nothing. I got the... Don't do me. Don't <laughs> do what... me. <laughs> don't do that's, what, that's what I got. So, so in my mind, I'm like, all right, you know, I'm a little hurt. You know what I'm saying? I almost shed a tear. A half a tear dropped out. I ain't gonna lie. It is what the fuck it is. So I'm like, all right, cool. That's cool. They don't, they don't, they don't like me. No problem. You know, I'm an unlikable person. It is what it is. So going to the bathroom and I see somebody else that I have been chopping it up when I'm chopping it up with them. And then some, this person that ignored the shit out of me was like, oh, hey, how are you? My name is. And I'm like, wow, you just ignored the fuck out of me. And now you want to introduce yourself. This is the shit that niggas do. But I fucking love it because you still you still did some nigga shit that I can't even be mad of. You can't be mad when niggas do nigga shit. Like, it is what no. the fuck it is. But this person that I'm speaking of is right here, Miss Latrice Samson Richards. How are you tonight? Hi, Ra. I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, rec I'm recuperating, but I'm doing well. I'm not complaining at all. I could be doing so, worse. I'm not going to complain. Let me tell y'all the real story, what really actually happened. Okay, so... I was I was working Podfest. I was covering the event for the Black Podcasters Association. I also have a uh, event that's coming up with Libsyn on February nineteenth, um, and they wanted me to record some promo for the event. So we was looking for a spot to record the promo. And the girl was like, oh, well, let's do it right here because the lighting is good. So when I looked down the hall, I said, oh, it's some black people down there. I need to make sure I come back down this hallway. But right now, I, you know, I'm recording a promo like I, these people got to, you know, trying to get me to working. do something. I was working. Yes, I was mm -hmm. working, but I made a mental note that I got to come back and see what the black folks is doing. So that's what happened. I didn't hear no body yelling or hollering or nothing like that. Cause I was actually recording at, you know, at the time I was just trying not to fuck up my lines. You know what I'm saying? So hey, that tomato, was my, potato. I hear you. That, <laughs> <laughs> that's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right. It looks like right. it was a misunderstanding. Nah, yes. nah, nah, Amron, we ain't doing this. We ain't doing this, yes. Amron. You supposed to be on my side. You don't even know her. You got to be on my side. Uh-uh. Black Bullshit. women always support black women. I uh, mean, that that's the only side. Uh, okay? uh no. I knew Amron first. We ain't doing this. <laughs> <laughs> this ancestral, though. This this is ancestral, what we got, what we got mm. going on. But I am glad that we did bump into each other again. Because like I said, I, I did make a mental note to come back down that table. I mean, to come, that, uh, come back down that hallway to go to the table and see what y'all had going on, you know, cause I mean, it is pie fest and you don't really get to see, you don't really see clusters of black people at pie fest, which is why I was there to begin with is that so many podcasters, black podcasters in particular, they don't get an opportunity to go to those kinds of events and things. Oh, 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 oh. Um, nope. You're going too far before we okay. even get there. You're going right. too far. <laughs> right. So right. can't forget the boss. Boss, how you feeling tonight? 
Hmm? Hello, Rob. Thank you for having me on your show. Always, always. So I wanted to have this conversation here. One, when I met Latrice, she reminded me so much of you, Emra. Uh, I saw a lot of y'all too, like instantly. I, if I'm not mistaken, I think um, probably like a half hour after I met her, I think DC was trying to call you because we was trying to like Yes, get y'all on the I phone. called up and I I, well, I don't I I missed don't know about it. that part, but we was I was we was actually like trying to like get y'all on the phone like ASAP type shit because y'all y'all favor each other a lot. Not necessarily like looks or attitude, just the mindset of which what what y'all have when it comes to like black folks podcasting, helping black folks out, stuff like that. So before we get too far into that, Latrice, tell us about you, what you do, how you got into podcasting, et cetera, et cetera. Mm, okay. So, um, hi, my name is Latrice Sampson Richards. I am a, uh, award-winning podcast host and producer. And, um, how did I get into podcasting? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to make a long story short, um, and just say, I started out in radio very, very briefly in public radio, uh, in New Orleans, where I'm from. And, um, that, kind of parlayed into podcasting. Somebody introduced me um, to podcasting and, and said, I think you should give it a try. And so I just started researching it and stuff. And I decided that, you know, it was something that I wanted to try out. So I did my first show back in uh, 2016 called uh, Unicorns Talk Podcast. I'm a therapist by trade. And so um I, it was it's a mental health podcast for black women um and our healing and our manifestation and so I did that podcast about uh two seasons about 68 episodes I like to say that's that's the podcast where I learned how to podcast um and I kind of felt like okay this is like something I think I actually want to do this for real like not just as a, a hobby, but I, I think I can possibly make a career out of this. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and so I did my first live show in uh, 2018 and uh, at a Pie Connection ATL, which I don't think is still operating, but um, I, that was my first ever live show. And at that event, I um, learned about Afros and Audio, which is the first podcast festival for Black podcasters and audio professionals. And so through um, through that connection, I you know had linked up with Afros and Audio and stuff, and I was supposed to speak for their second year, and that didn't happen. And then um, I was supposed to speak for the third year, and then COVID happened. Um, and so I had an opportunity to become a part of the team when Talib, who is the founder of Afros and Audio, or I think it was for the second year, it was for the second year, Talib was like, um, you know, anybody know how to do this video thing? <laughs> and at the time I was doing like three live streams a week, you know, um, plus recording and all kind of stuff like that. So I offered my skills and I just became a part of the team. And that's where most people really was introduced to me was through my work with Afros and audio. And from there, I've been able to, you know, thankfully kind of put my hands on a little bit of everything in podcasting, um, in Black podcasting in particular. Um, I hosted the Black Podcasting Awards in 2022 and 2023, which was a major achievement for me. Um, especially last year, we, we uh, broadcast live from Times Square, Black owned podcast studio, shout out to Postream Studios in, uh, in, t in the middle of Times Square. So that was a major goal accomplishment for me, you know, and um, podcasting has just been, um, it's been a beautiful community to be a part of. And it's, it's been a beautiful journey for me um, in like learning and understanding my, the depths of my creativity and, um, you know, meeting people and, and really uh, being able to provide some sense of, you know, community to the community, if that makes sense, you know, um, 
I think podcast and the podcasting community as a whole kind of has that community vibe. You, you know, you felt it at PodFest. Um, it, it's a community vibe. You know, most podcasters, I think we kind of see ourselves as the outcasts, you know. Um, but even within that community, the Black podcasting community is even more special. And so, um, you know, the community been loving on me for, you know, about six years now. And um, I've been loving back and, and it's a, it's a mutual love. Um, and so I'm just, you know, it's my thing. I do, I, I support black podcasters in whatever way that I can. Both of y'all, one of the things that I <clears throat> kind of feel like y'all have in common is both of y'all want to support black podcasters. Like, like Amron, I almost feel like when it comes to Amron, she don't like no, she don't know how to tell people no, if you will. Yeah. And and True. I know I know me and Amron have slightly had this conversation before because it's like certain shit is like yo you could you can say no, person's feelings hurt they feelings hurt it is what it is but I you, know you can't always extend yourself. Why do True. both of y'all feel like y'all have to help out? Black podcasters so much. Why do y'all feel like that's something y'all need to do? Oh, I'll go. For me personally, um, it's building a community. Um, I think, but I want to build a community of the real voice of Black America. I think so much, a lot of the wrong perspective is being pushed out of what our voices like is. Um, and I think that's the problem. Um, especially with Opulence Radio, I want it to be real perspective, real Black America. This is really what we have to say. Not all the bullshit that's being jumped at, like thrown down our throat. Um, I don't care about what's happening with Kiki Palmer. I don't care what's happening with Blueface. I don't care what's going on with that trash. I want to know how can we fix the water in Flint? What are we doing to be better parents? What are we doing to be better people? What are we doing to evolve? Um, that's really what I care about. And that's what I want to push out more. So I really think that's my goal because there weren't enough outlets that were really pushing the real voice of Black America. And if I can get more perspectives and more voices thrown out there, big or small, that's really my goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's very similar for me in that um, I think that, you know, we I, I, obviously we deserve to be the authors of our own stories. And I think yes. um, my own journey, like I said, like in my own creativity, I feel like podcasting has really helped me to discover myself in, in so many ways. And I think it's, you know, the therapist in me, I'm always wanting for Black people in particular to kind of embark on that journey of, of self-discovery and self-understanding. Um, and podcasting for me has been such a huge part of that um, because connecting with myself creatively has helped me to understand, you know, different parts of myself that I have been struggling to understand. And, and so it really has been a very healing experience for me, you know? Um, and so I feel like if I had that experience, I want other people, other black people in particular to be able to have that experience as well. Whatever that means for you, you know, my journey is mine and, and it looks like what it looks like for me and your journey is yours and it's gonna look like whatever it needs to look like for you. And so if I can be a part of helping you through that journey in whatever way that I can. And I, I want to do that, you know, um, because we have to be able to tell our own stories because the people that's been telling our stories, you know, since the dawn of time, um, they, they don't know what they're talking about. Um, and so I think it, you know, podcasting is, uh, I call it the great equalizer, you know, um, in that the barrier to entry is so low. Like, yes, we talk a lot about, um, you know, producing high quality content and things like that. Like if you, if you indie and you, you want to become professional, then yes, there's some skill sets that you need to learn, um, in terms of just learning the craft. But if, you know, if you want to tell a story, the barrier to entry is very, very low. Um, and so I think we have the ability to tell our stories, um, unlike we ever have before. And so as many people as I could get 
into that, um, I, I want to do that. Uh, so that's kind of my driving force. So I know I burnt DC the fuck out. Shout out to DC for what the shit podcast, but I know I burnt him the fuck out my first day at Podfest because I kept saying, where the fuck is the black people? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I didn't say where's the black people. I said, where's the niggas? Because <laughs> I seen some black people. I didn't see no niggas. Mm -hmm. And I ain't gonna lie, that shit was burning me the fuck out because the, the, the black people that I that I kept seeing. It was like you could look at him and see black person, mm. but this everything about him screamed them, mm. and it was like, well, damn, why is it we can't even be us in a in a podcast setting? Mm. Like it's not like the podcast setting don't have to be the most professional, buttoned up suit and tie. You can be you because of your podcast is your opinion, your feelings, how you, how you look at the earth, how you view the world, like this is you. So why do you feel you need to be them to still not be you in something of this, this light, if you will? Why do you feel like even in these spaces, people feel like they still can't just be them as black people? Why do you feel like they still feel like they got to be a part of them to be in a, in a podcast community, if you will? Well, I, I think it's primarily because of the makeup of the industry, you know, like the industry, just like every other major industry, um, it's a it's white dominated, specifically white male dominated. Um, and podcasting is no different. And so um, for for those most of the people who go to PodFest are, you know, people who are looking to be professional podcasters in some way, right? So, you know, they're not, they're not indie, they're not hobbyist. Um, they, they are really looking to be professional podcasters, although you don't have to be in order to do that, um, in order to attend PodFest, but most of the people that you're going to run into at PodFest, um, have hopes of, or are, uh, professional podcasters. And so they see themselves as a part of the industry and within the industry, you know, outside of spaces that have been specifically and intentionally curated for black podcasters, like Afros and audio, like black podcasters association, like black pod collective and things like that. Like we have these spaces, but outside of those spaces, everything else is white dominated and so you know people just like on the you know in the workplace when you go on a on a regular nine to five job people feel the need to assimilate in those spaces as well because that is you know you you assimilate to the culture that that you are existing as a part of in that moment um or at least it's the, the belief is that you must assimilate to the culture of, um, you know, that, that you're currently existing in. And so, you know, I mean, I'm not necessarily with that. I think, you know, I try my best to show up as me wherever I am. Um, and that's one of the things I think that people appreciate the most about me is that uh, I'm going to be me. Like I'm going to be me, the same me that you met at, Afro, at, at, at PodFest. That's the same me you're going to be at Afro. I don't know how to be nobody else. It's, it's just who I am. Um, and, and, you know, thankfully I've received acceptance for being who I am. People tend to appreciate who I am, um, but it's some folks that don't. And, you know, I'm, I would be lying if I said it didn't, you know, bother me sometimes, but at the end of the day, it's not going to stop me from being me. It's not going to stop me from, from being who I am. So I think it's more so about, you know, what we have been conditioned to believe in, in the sense of we have to assimilate in order to grow, in order to get along. Um, and so being a part of Black podcasting communities that have already been built kind of show you that that's not necessarily the case, that there is there are Black people at every level of this industry, every level of this industry who have remained themselves at every step of their journey and they are an active part of the black podcasting community regardless of what their level or their status is um in the industry as a whole and and I think it's a beautiful thing 
Yeah, as we as we me and DC down at Podfest, we everybody's like, oh, my podcast is about teaching you this, showing you that. And then they look at us and we like, oh, we just two dudes that just talk a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it was almost like people was waiting for us to to like say something inspiring, and we just like, yeah, nah, we not them guys. Like <laughs> that's not us. Which 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 is crazy because. When we first said it in the beginning, people would look at us crazy. But then after they sat around us for a little bit, then people would start to look like, oh, shit, these some cool motherfuckers. Like, hold up. Like, because you didn't you didn't did all even without either one of us trying. You didn't laugh like a motherfucker. You didn't probably learn some shit. You didn't probably let your guard down mm -hmm. and all of that because it's like, fuck, like these ain't these ain't your average motherfuckers right here. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? These guys are 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 a little bit different. Uh, Amron, do you feel like you got to be different when you in spaces with like white white America, I guess, when it comes to podcasting? Or it's like, man, listen, I'm a podcaster. I may sound like one of y'all, but I'm a nigga, motherfucker. Like, no, no. I think the problem really is we need to be comfortable with being black famous. I think the issue is we everyone wants to cross over and I totally get that to get as many listeners to get as many followers to get as many to that next level but I think sometimes we might just need to court and advance it it's okay to be black famous um you can be amazing you can do great things with it and love still Courtney be yourself mm -hmm. love I said right, I love facts. Courtney Vance you know what I'm saying yeah facts um <laughs> it's you don't have to you can authentically be yourself with your people and that be it. I think the problem is too many of us want to, it's that crossover thing. We want to get the mama, the cousin, the Indian lady, the lady doing the Chinese food, the person at the grocery store. And sometimes that's not your target audience. Mm -hmm. Sometimes for the shit you're saying, you need to focus on who that group is and just dominate that. Um, and that's what the point is with Opulence Radio. And if you don't have the app, definitely Check out the App Store and the Google Play Store. Again, that's Opulence Radio. Also taking submissions for independent music all the time. Again, email me at amron at opulenceradio.com. Again, A-M-R-O-N. Thank you. Yeah, Fucking love, love it. it. Yes. <laughs> on point at all fucking times. I fucking love it. I fucking love it. Hey, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to play some music and we're going to come back because we want to. I want to get into the Black Podcast Association. This is something that I wanted to look up a little bit more, but as I said, I fuck around and got sick, so it was what the fuck it was. I ain't look at shit. I ain't think about shit. <laughs> I didn't know if I was going to be here today, goddammit. Mm. <laughs> the way I was feeling. But we're going to play some motherfucking music. Y'all know what it is. We've been back in the building. All on the table, baby. Oh. Even 
Hey, motherfuckers, we are 